I've been a Linux user for a while now. I mainly use my computer for gaming. Recently, Linux became my god place. I even forgot when was the last time I booted into Windows. So, I decided to do my part to contribute to the Linux community, and I went through all my game library, found 20 games with built-in benchmarks, and tested them on both Windows and on Linux. I also had a funny story about how Linux throttled my CPU and GPU, and I, I had to restart all the tests, but that story is in the comment section. I tested all the games at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p resolutions. I have done all the tests four times and threw away the first one and took the average of the three last ones. So I eliminated the uh, problems that may come from the cold stars or shader compilations. Anyway, here are the results after more than 800 benchmarks. Our first game is from 2015. Dirt Rally is a DirectX 11 game. It offers a good deal of MSA-based and anti-aliasing options, but I decided not to use MSA in these tests because I'm already uh, doing these tests uh, as high resolutions as 4K. So here we can see Linux is slightly behind Windows. At 4K, the difference is 15%, but at lower resolutions, the gap is closed down to 7%. Luckily, the game is very well optimized for both systems, and even at 4K, it's possible to go a smooth 60 FPS experience. And we have another 2015 game. This time it's GTA V. It's still one of the most played games and still can be a headache on many computers. In this benchmark, everything is at ultra but MSA is disabled again. Linux makes a good start at 4K by taking the lead with 10% more performance. However, the gap is closed in favor of Windows at lower resolutions. Considering GTA V enhanced settings section is too heavy for CPUs and particularly AMD GPUs, it's a well-earned success for Linux to even keep up with the competition. We are going even more to the past now, 2013. I can't believe I still didn't play this game. I've had it for many years on my Steam library, but I never find the time to start it. After this video, I'm definitely starting Bioshock series. In the benchmark, everything is at ultra with additional DirectX 11 depth of field applied. And we are faced with a scenario that Linux is losing to Windows by 29% at 4K. Even though 65 FPS is still fully playable, this is a big margin. Down to 1080p, the difference is reduced to 11%, but Windows still has the lead. Our fourth game is Chernobylite, also the first DirectX 12 game in the list. Newer games are relatively better optimized for Linux because they fall into the time zone, uh, lucky time zone, that when Linux professionals really leveled up their game with their software. At 4K, there is only one FPS difference, but I think it's in the margin of error. At lower resolutions, Linux takes the lead up to 8%, an indication of how better Vulkan can be. When it came to ray tracing, unfortunately everything I tried had failed. I tried switching to pro drivers, enabling some environment variables for radio mesa drivers, and um, playing with so many settings combinations through Lutris, but ray tracing simply refused to work. Anyway, judging by the numbers on Windows, I can say the game is not enjoyable at any of these resolutions, so I would prefer having higher performance at higher resolutions. Let's go back to DirectX 11, one of my favorite games, Batman Arkham Knight. Linux has an easy win at 1440p and 1080p here, but at 4K, Windows takes over the lead by 4%. And even worse, there's 27% more FPS fluctuations between minimums and maximums on Linux than Windows. A minimum 5% of 48 FPS is also concerning for those who want a smooth 60 FPS all the time. Now we have a Metro Exodus. With DirectX 11, the game exhibits very large differences between minimum and maximum values. And minimum values are disturbing the low for all resolutions. Between Linux and Windows, there's a solid 9% lead for Linux at all resolutions. A win for Linux. When we switch to DirectX 12, all average and low 5% numbers see a rise. And Linux secures its lead at 1080p with an increased difference to 15%.
When it comes to Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, I once again failed to enable ray tracing, so there is no test for Linux here. I was only able to capture Windows performance. However, I strongly believe there is a way to run this game with AMD hardware on Linux. And if anybody knows it, please, please let me know in the comments. I would love a simple guide and then update the benchmarks with ray tracing results. Moving to World War Z, another game with two graphics APIs. This time we have Vulkan and DirectX 11. And here DirectX 11 is well optimized and not prone to bad CPU utilizations on Windows. The game is generally well optimized actually. We can see that by looking at how little fluctuation there is between minimum and maximum values. Linux loses by 10% at 1080p though, but at 4K the gap is closed down to 2%. A rare case, because normally we see Linux getting better at lower resolutions. Things are only improved for both OSs when switched to Vulkan. All the values are lifted up, including minimums and maximums, and Windows improves its lead going to 16% from 10 at 1080p. And now we have a new PC killer here. Playing Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p or 4K with ultra settings is definitely not a job for my poor 6700 XT. By the way, here I believe there's a measurement difference between Linux and Windows, because you can see that by looking at the minimum and maximum values. Even though average values are mostly similar, the fluctuations are vastly different between two operating systems. I personally never witnessed any of these problems while playing on Linux, but the numbers are there. Now we come to a controversial game. Originally, Horizon Zero Dawn was amongst the Steam Deck verified list, but then Linus Sebastian said the game had slowed down to a freezing point after playing several hours. I believe neither Wine and Proton versions addressed these issues, and now the game runs much better. With that being said, Windows still has the lead by up to 23% at 4K. At 1080p, Windows still has the upper end by 9%, but has disturbing fluctuations at minimums as low as 38 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has more promising results for Team Linux. I know it has a Linux native version and it's loved by the community, but I bought the game from Epic and unfortunately it only offers Windows version. I know, shame on me. Linux has the lead here, luckily. It only slightly falls behind Windows at 1080p and that's only by 2%. Unfortunately, I couldn't measure the difference with DirectX 12 because it freezes the computer entirely on Linux and I had to hard reset it by pressing the power button. But by looking at the increases in the numbers, I would say it would be a hard competition for Linux. Let's go back to an older Tomb Raider title. The 2013 game runs nicely on both operating systems at all resolutions. Windows is the clear winner here. It leads by 23% at 4K and it still secures its place by 10% at 1080p. Speaking about classics, let's look at the only game I was able to run with ray tracing on. Crisis Remastered comes with its own type of ray tracing. The game is built on DirectX 11, but its ray tracing implementation is built on Vulkan. And this gives a clean win for Linux by up to 20% at 1440p. When ray tracing is dialed to very high, Linux has even a clearer win by leaving Windows behind with roughly 23% gain. Now let's dive into Ubisoft territory. Linux really shines here in Tom Clancy's The Division. With DirectX 11, performance of Linux is only 6% slower at 4K, but things turns into Linux favor at 1440p by 8%. And at 1080p, Linux leaves Windows in the dust with a 41% difference. This is where we can see a bad optimization example from AMD with DirectX 11 on Windows. Things only get better for Linux with the introduction of DirectX 12. The 4K gap is almost closed, and at 1080p, Linux puts on another show by a giant 46%. Coming to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the differences grow oddly. Linux lags behind Windows by 17% at 4K, but pulls ahead by a whooping 31% at 1080p. I believe a difference that big cannot be explained only with bad optimized drivers, nor CPU utilization limits, or anything else. I believe there is more going on with the VRAM usage here.
When we look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla, things take an interesting turn. Here Linux has the advantage at 4K by 17%, but the gap closes at 1440p and Windows takes the lead by 4% at 1080p. I know DirectX 12 drivers are much better optimized by AMD for Windows, so I wasn't expecting a slowdown at 1080p on Windows side, but Linux having the lead at 4K, well that's something. It makes me think if smart memory has anything to do with it. Another controversial title, Forza Horizon is a Microsoft game. I think that it's working on Linux is a success, and also an indication of how talented and devoted Linux developers are. The results are as expected, Linux starts behind Windows by 19% at 4K, and the gap is narrowed down to 7% at 1080p. Considering Forza Horizon 5 can also run on Linux, I'll call this one a solid victory. I couldn't think of a benchmark list without Red Dead Redemption 2, and I borrowed it from my cousin. My first trial was with DirectX 12, and it didn't run on Linux. It actually froze my computer. So here we have only Windows numbers. Luckily, the game runs just fine with Vulkan on Linux, and I was able to capture a good comparison. Unsurprisingly, Linux runs very close to Windows here, with approximately 3% less performance, which is completely acceptable. Here we have another Ubisoft game with a familiar scenario. In Far Cry 5, Linux lags behind Windows by 10% at 4K, but quickly takes the lead back at 1440p by 12% and increases the lead by up to 18% at 1080p. I started to believe that Linux is very well suited for 1080p or 1440p monitors with high refresh rates. Last two games in our list, Borderlands 3 didn't let me capture minimum and maximum values, so only averages here. Both with DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, the numbers are pretty much the same. A solid win for Windows. The margin is 20% at 4K and closes down to 3% at 1080p. Our final game in the list is Middle Earth Shadow of War. We can easily see the same pattern here. At 4K, Windows has the lead by 16%, but Linux quickly catches up at low resolutions and takes over the lead by 4% at 1080p. Let's look at the overall results for 4K. I'm excluding the 4 tests which didn't run on Linux. The chart shows 25 test results from 20 games. At 4K, Linux is 6% slower than Windows on average. 7 games in the middle are within the 5% margin, so I believe it's okay to accept them as uh, almost equals. The only concerning result here is Bioshock Infinite being 29% slower on Linux than Windows. When we look at the 1440p results, things are becoming better for Linux. Forza Horizon 4's result here, I believe, is um, inconsistent with its 4K and 1080p counterparts. But I, I included the results anyway. Other than that, there are no preference changing numbers here. Everything is within a 20% margin. At 1080p, here we have some game changing results. Linux is 5% faster than Windows on average. But 4 of these results have more than 20% differences. Linux definitely offers a visibly better experience in The Division, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Crisis Remastered games. Most of these games run on DirectX 11 here and I can understand why Linux wins. But The Division with DirectX 12 having a 46% difference in favor of Linux is something to consider. We all know that the XVK has already matured very well, but this tells us how good also VKD3D as well. So here, we are at the end of the video. I really want to make another video with ray tracing enabled this time. I also want to make in-game measurements, but I still couldn't find a way how to run Mango Hut and Gamescope together. So if any of you guys know how to do that and how to enable properly ray tracing, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate a good guide so I can update my results. Thank you for watching this far and happy gaming.